All right, today we're gonna be doing a little update on my duty bag. So let's bring you guys in here. So this is my duty bag. It is from 911 gear. I got this about a year ago. Uh, as we go through, you're gonna see the, the honest wear that a bag takes in a year. This one has fared a lot better than a whole bunch of companies' duty bags that I've had. Uh, on the top of it is a huge Velcro strip that lots of people put these goofy police patches on. I don't see any purpose for that. Anybody that looks into my police car and sees a police patch should pretty well know that you know it's the, I'm the police before they see that patch on the bag. I don't know the purpose for putting a police patch on the bag and especially embroider over the top. So I'm glad the 911 gear just puts Velcro there so that you can put whatever patches you want up there. And I kind of like throwing morel patches up there. It's the only thing that has come up in the comment section from the original duty bag video where people said that they either put a name tape on there because everyone's issued the same thing, not a problem for me, or they'll put morel patches up there, which is pretty cool. I got a free field training channel patch, some one asterisk patch, and a little uh, Canadian flag blue line patch that a friend of mine sent me. Uh, over to the left, I keep right on top, is a pair of my Hatch Duty Gloves. We've got a video on these. They're the Hatch Frisk Masters. I just bought these gloves new. My old ones, I had worn some holes through the fingers of them. But those attach through a little Velcro strap on here. And so when you're sitting in the car, and I would be sitting over to this side of the bag, it's easy to grab a hold of them and get them off the bag, so I don't have to stuff them in pockets or anything when I'm getting ready for work. They can stay in my bag and stay in the car, stay in the trunk of my car, and I know that I'm always gonna have them there. On the right side of the bag is a big open pouch where I keep my reflective vest. This reflective vest is from uh, Horn Small. Well, I'll put links to all the stuff that I show on here down in the description, at least as much as I can find. Uh, it's good to have a nice reflective vest that is up front with you so before you get out of the car you can get the vest on. And it's nice also to be able to stuff it back in which is a nice feature of having this big open pouch that doesn't have a zipper on the top. And then underneath I've got a roll of black duct tape. Black duct tape is kind of a uh, universal fix-it tool in law enforcement I have found. Uh, on the side closest to me in the car I have a rip away medical pouch from Stat Medical Devices and it has this little clip over the top. It's kind of a safety mechanism. And then you can grab the handle and pull the med pouch off of the bag. So I can have the med pouch, I can have it attached to the bag. It doesn't take up space inside the bag. And I can tear it out and take it where I need to go without having to pull individual pieces out, which is really nice. The inside of the med pouch is set up very similar to the red Stat medical pouch that you see I had in the trunk of my car in previous videos, and it's set up in a similar way. So you've got two stat tourniquets, a pair of scissors, some Z-Pack, and pressure dressings, very simple instructions, rubber gloves, and it's all packed away pretty easily to so be able to put extra stuff in here if you want to. I'm gonna add some hemostatic agent in here later on down the road, but this has worked out really well for me, having it on the side of the pack. I can always have it with me even if I don't have my trunk bag with me. If I'm just grabbing and going to go to court or I have to get in the car really fast and hit the road, I can always have this attached to the duty bag. And then I also have this available if I'm running out for a bad accident scene or something. I can just grab it and rip it off. And if I have to send someone into my car to go get a medical bag, I can say, just go in my car and rip the bag off the side of my duty bag. And everyone I work with is gonna know where that's at. stat tourniquet that comes with these. The two stat tourniquets are also pretty cool. I've got videos on there. You can see them up there. This has a base that mollies on to the molly webbing that's on the side of the 911 gear bag here. And sticking it on and off is pretty easy once you get it mollied into place. On the top of the bag, I have a 21 inch polycarbonate baton. Extendable batons are great, but extendable batons are the handgun of batons. You carry them because they're convenient to carry. A solid, rigid polycarbonate baton or wood baton is what we would carry if we knew we were going into a fight. If we knew we were going into a bar fight, we'd rather have a solid baton than an extendable. They're kind of the rifle or shotgun of the baton world, and so I always keep one on the top of my bag, and I have it set up so that I can slide it right back in without having to undo the Velcro loops on these. Uh, this 911 gear bag has a big pouch on the top of the bag 
so that you can segregate out gear into stuff that you need, stuff you don't need, and have things available. Just be able to go into a pouch and get it without having to dig through a bunch of other stuff. And so I keep all of my traffic stuff up here. So my ticket books and the holder is all up top. So inside my metal holder, it just kind of velcros down. And under here, I can keep my Y ticket books, which is the moving violation books, and the metal holder, and it allows me to have a, a surface, like I can take a ticket, throw it over the top and be able to write on it without it pressing through to all the tickets underneath, or just using this little flimsy cardboard thing that sometimes does and sometimes doesn't work. And then inside of the holder, I can keep my offense code book, and all of the sighting cards and stuff like that so that I know what court dates I'm gonna use for what. On the outside front of the bag, I have a P-ticket book. P-tickets are one of the few tickets that I actually write because people that park in handicapped parking spots get on my nerves. At uh, one point in my life, I was wheelchair bound, and then I had a walker. I had uh, bilateral talpedes, better known as club foot, for some of you. And so if you're going to get a ticket from me, chances are it's going to be a P ticket, and it's going to be for handicap parking, and that's why I keep it on the outside of my bag. Even then, it's not very much. But that's why it's on the outside of the bag. On the front of the bag, I keep my OC spray. OC spray, I keep it in the bag. I haven't ever really needed it as an emergency item, like something that I need now, now, now. I need to have it right now. It's not my first choice for use of force, but where this can come in handy is when someone decides they're gonna hide in a closet or a utility room or something like that and they're not gonna come out. It's a whole lot easier to spray this in than it is to get three big dudes with all their gear on inside a closet to drag someone out. In the middle of the bag, I have a uh, cheap BB gun with a really, really crappy trigger. I don't even know what brand this one is. Humorex. Cheap BB gun with a really, really crappy trigger. And then in here I've got BBs and CO2 canisters. Uh, this is for simple training. It's hard in the city to get to a legitimate range, but it's really easy to find some place in the woods or an industrial park where you can put some cans up and pop some rounds. And as a training officer, if I have somebody that's having problems with qualifying, I can take them and I can do dry fire practice and then have them shoot a little bit with the BB gun, maybe fire 20, 30 rounds until the CO2 cartridge is empty. And if they can handle the long, heavy trigger of one of these crappy BB gun triggers, uh, handling a Glock or a Sig P320 or a 226 is gonna be a lot easier for them. I've had a lot of success with doing this, even though I get a lot of negative comments on the videos for saying that I do it. If it's stupid and it works, it's not stupid. Over here, I keep sunscreen because I'm bleach white. Uh, right now I'm shooting this, it's the middle of winter, but I always keep the sunscreen in here because I don't like changing things in and out of the bag depending on the seasons. I always keep sunscreen in my bag and that way I'm ready in the middle of the summer. If I suddenly go to day shift and it gets warm out, I wanna have sunscreen to be able to put it on my arm. Otherwise, I end up with FTO arm with my, my right arm is, is brown, right? I have patrolman arm and my left arm is brown from hanging out the window. Inside the top of the bag here are a bunch of zipper pouches. Inside, I just have simple medication, antidiarrheal medication, because antidiarrheal medicine uh, will save your butt out on the street. Way save your butt. A couple extra pens. I like to use the Pilot G2s or the corner office pens. We got a whole video on uh, writing materials and writing instruments for law enforcement and especially dealing with cold weather. Uh, gel ink pens are awesome. And a big fat boy marker, which is really helpful for uh, marking evidence bags and things like that, things that you want really boldly marked. There's also a little strap in here should someone be interested in attaching their gloves on the inside. I guess I could use this for my winter gloves, but I already keep them in my coat. Inside the top is a big zip open pouch where I can keep uh, extra medication and personal items, toothpicks, stuff like that. Inside the front compartment of the bag, you can see it's got plastic dividers 
inside that divide it up into a couple different containers. And inside there I have, this is a Posse Box brand, big metal clipboard with all of my paperwork for the street inside. So in here, I have separated out into these little plastic binder containers is different types of paperwork. So I'll do one type of paperwork front, one type of paperwork back, so that I can just look at the outside of these and keep be able to keep two different forms in them, be able to always find them. And then like this one, I don't know what's supposed to be on the other side of this, but I know I'm out of it, so it's time to go look for it. When I see a blank form on the back, I know that I'm missing something and it's time for me to fill back up. And on the top, I have all of my adjudication cheat sheets, uh, pedestrian stop data sheets for uh, the DOT, vehicle impoundment sheets, and then this stuff now, these 1050 books, used to be a big thing for uh, police work here in Illinois, and now we're going almost entirely electronic, so these are gonna be a thing of the past pretty soon. And then short order notifications, order protection short form, so somebody gets an order of protection, and you have to serve them with the short form of it on the street and tell them how they can get a full copy of the order of protection. All that stuff, all the forms and things, they all go in here. So let's say I had to serve someone with a short order form of order of protection. I can pull it out, put the copy behind, and be able to write on the clipboard and tear it off without having to go find a separate clipboard and then look through a folio. I know a lot of people really like a folio and a separate clipboard. I don't know. This has worked really well for me for a long time and now I think I'm just too old to change. <laughs> In the back area of the bag is a little tan change pouch thing. And inside of here, I keep extra keys. Got an extra set of keys in here. I've got my old uh, calendars and old notepads and things like that. Down in the front, cheap pair of binoculars. You'd be amazed with binoculars, how much you can see, especially at night, how much these help with seeing distance at night. When you're out looking for car burglars or something like that, you can park a couple blocks away from where you think they might be hanging out at and be able to see them with the binoculars and see them a lot better and get a good description out over the radio before you go to stop someone. More pens. Cold and flu medicine, which I should probably have in the top, but I haven't put away yet. More cold and flu medicine. And, oh, one of day vitamins that I forgot were in there. I didn't clean the bag out before I did the video. And bolt cutters. Bolt cutters, people put a lot of negative comments down on the last duty bag video, but there's no way I'm taking them out. These have come in handy more times than you could possibly imagine. I go in apartments where they have padlocks on the doors of bedrooms. Like every bedroom in a three bedroom apartment has a padlock on the door. Or we see somebody's car and we're gonna search it and they have a padlocked container in the trunk or something padlocked into the trunk to keep people from getting out, getting inside of it. Or you have a house, you need to get in the backyard, you gotta snip the lock on the gate to get in. These solve a lot of problems and they solve them in a big hurry. It's nice to not have to wait around for the boss to bring out the big, long, four foot long set of bolt cutters when a little 18 or 21 inch set can get the job done on most jobs. And then down at the bottom, I've got a spare flashlight and some whiteout that should probably really be in the posse box, it's probably full out. And that's about it. So that's the stuff I carry in a duty bag, as usual. I'm not saying this is the stuff you need to carry. It's just the stuff that's kind of worked out for me in the area that I'm in and the stuff that I'm doing. So until next week, you guys be safe. Take care of each other. I'd like to thank all the Patreon supporters and especially the shift supervisor level Patreon supporters that we have listed here. Your contributions are what allows free field training to continue on and become better. Thank you.